if you were an artist and someone asked you to paint a, an Easter picture, I know where you'd begin. Almost certainly you would begin with light. Somewhere in your picture you would you show the sun just breaking over the horizon. Of course, of course that's where you'd start with. That's why so many churches have sunrise services on Easter Sunday. It's the very essence of the day. This feeling is so deep that we expect nature itself to cooperate with us. If Easter dawns overcast or rainy or snowy, we somehow think God has forgotten what day it is. Easter is supposed to be bright, cheerful, overflowing with life. I remember as a child, one of the standing traditions was to take a picture of, of the three boys, my brothers and I, in front of the massive azalea bush in our front yard. Easter is supposed to be bright and cheerful and overflowing with life. Dark and gloomy weather is all right for Good Friday. We might not like it, but at least it's appropriate. But Easter, it means sunshine. That's, that's the proper order of things. But logical as that seems, it's not the way the Bible tells the story. Remember how our scripture lesson this morning from the Gospel of John begins. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. The man who wrote the Gospel of John was an artist with words and images. He was not using words casually when he began his report of this first Easter by telling us it was still dark. Like a, a master dramatist, he was setting the stage for us, preparing us for what was to follow in his majestic story. You see, John, who gave us this gospel, emphasized the, the theme of light and darkness throughout his book, beginning, in fact, with a very beginning paragraph. There he tells us that, that God's Son came into the world in, in, into the world as light, and that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness is never able to overcome it. He tells us this right up front. But now, but now, as we come to the end of John's story, it looks as if the darkness has overcome the light. Jesus, the Son of God, has been tried in court, beaten, humiliated, crucified, and laid, into a, and laid in a borrowed tomb. He is dead. So when one of his devoted followers, Mary Magdalene, comes to the tomb, she comes in the darkness. As far as Mary Magdalene was concerned, it was simply not just the darkness of early morning. In truth, with the death of Jesus, the light had gone out of Mary's life. Some months ago, perhaps two or even three years ago, Mary had been living in perpetual darkness. Whether noonday or midnight, sunrise or sunset, it was all the same to Mary Magdalene because she was living in darkness. Now, we don't know all the details of her story, though we're tempted to draw some kind of soap opera script. It was commonly said that the poor woman had seven demons, which is the first century's way of saying that Mary was full of the devil. Evil had, had so overwhelmed her life that she seemed bent on self-destruction. Her life was lived in darkness. Then one day she met Jesus of Nazareth, and he cast out the demons that obsessed her and possessed her. 
And on that day, her darkness became light. When, where previously people had avoided her because of the eerie sense of foreboding that marked her. Now they wanted to be near her because to be near Mary now that she'd encountered Jesus was to be in the light. Now a radiance shone from her. It's not surprising that when we read about her in the gospel stories, she is so often the first one mentioned. I suspect that she was a natural leader now that the light had come into her life. But that was before the soldiers took Jesus and the courts unjustly condemned him and the crowd shrieked for his blood. That was before they took his beautiful body, now a pathetic lump, a crumpled mass, and laid it in a tomb. Now Jesus was gone, and the light had gone out of Mary's life. No wonder then that the gospel writer says that when she came to the tomb, it was, it, it was dark. I'm quite sure that John intended to tell us more than the sun just hadn't risen yet. He is not simply talking about clock time. He has given us a description of the state of Mary's mind and the, and the minds of all of Jesus' followers. Indeed, it may be so, I, let me say anyway, that he is making a poetic philosophical statement about the very state of the human race. It was, it was dark and as, as dark as hell. I, I want you to come back with me for a moment or two further back in the story. In fact, as far back as the beginning of our human recollection, as, as the Bible tells it. Come to that time when the Bible says that humanity was living in a garden, a, a paradise, the Garden of Eden. It was there that the human race went wrong, and Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden under the sentence of death. And the human race had been sentenced to death since that time. That is, there was this darkness in the world. Whatever joy life might bring, it was, it was always going to end. Whatever, whenever there was a celebration, whether it was a, a wedding or a birth or a victory in war, a harvest festival, you knew that it would come to an end. So too with human relationships, no matter how much you love someone, you, you could not keep that person forever because either that person would leave you or you would leave, have to leave that person. That, that's what death was all about. Some philosophers taught that it was better that we should not love anybody because to do so was only to build ourselves up to a bitter disappointment of losing that person either because that person would die or, or because we would. Death had come into our world and, and with death had come darkness. No matter how lovely the light may be of any day or of any event or any person, darkness would eventually destroy the light. So John's Gospel has has it right when he tells us that when Mary Magdalene came to the tomb that morning, it was dark. It was dark for Mary, as I've already said, because the light of her life, the one who had broken into her darkness some time ago, was now gone. Darkness had won again. It always did, it seemed, to Mary. As far back as Mary could remember, darkness had always won. Now it had won again, and she came to the garden in the dark. And when she got there, she discovered that the tomb was empty. And this did not make her think that a miracle had happened. Rather, she reasoned that some cruel, vicious person had stolen Jesus' body. And Mary, 
must have thought the darkness had grown even deeper than ever. So she ran to tell Peter and John, and they came to the tomb and inspected, then returned home. But, but Mary stayed there. By then the sun was already risen, but Mary was still in the dark. As far as she knew, so was the whole world, the whole human race. It was still in the dark, just as she was. And there, in the darkness, Mary wept. Then she heard a voice. It must have been the gardener, she thought. And he was asking her why she was crying. And Mary explained that apparently someone had moved Jesus' body. And she asked the man if, she, if he knew where they had taken it. And the voice simply answered, Mary. And at once Mary knew that it was her Lord. And that is when the darkness rolled away. For Mary and for the whole human race, that is when death lost its power and life won. That is when the power of darkness was broken and the light of God reigned supreme. This is the, the great good news I bring to you this Easter Sunday. Easter was not born in the sunlight. Easter was born in the dark. And it still comes to us in the dark. Whatever the dark place may be in your life, however fearfully dark that place might be, Easter comes in the person of our living Lord. Because when the, the power of death was broken by the resurrection of our, our Lord Jesus, all the power of darkness was broken in all the other dark places of life. Is the darkness some habit you cannot break? Or perhaps thoughts you hate to even acknowledge to yourself? Or is your dark place simply that collage of unfulfilled dreams or, or loneliness so deep that sometimes it, it constricts your heart? Or is it fear, fear of someone or some memory or, or even death itself? The true light that gives light to everyone has come into the world. Jesus spoke again to the people saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. In him was life. And that life was the light of all humanity. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Whatever the darkness in your life, I want to tell you that the same Lord who came to Mary Magdalene so long ago stands ready on this Easter Sunday to come to you, to expel the darkness of your life by the very power of the eternal light that was in him. That's because Easter was born in the dark. And wherever there is darkness, Easter still comes to bring that magnificent light of Jesus. By God's grace, may it be your light today, even today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. One God, always and forever. Amen.